When you started your podcast, did you set a goal of hitting a certain podcast rank? We all want to be a top podcast. We get podcast envy when we see other podcasts hit the top charts and Apple podcasts, especially when they do it quickly. What does your podcast rank really mean? And does it really matter? That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back to Podcast Launchpad. I'm Kelly. One of my clients, Corinne Gearhart, started the Doodle Pro podcast at the beginning of August 2022. In her second week of release, she hit number three in the United States in her category, Pets and Animals. Today, her show has made the top five in seven countries, having hit number one in four countries. Talk about feeling pride and podcast envy. How did she do it? First, Corinne has an incredibly tight niche. Her show is the only podcast devoted to helping parents of doodle mixed dogs have, quote, the happiest, healthiest, and most well-mannered dog on the block. Isn't that awesome? Second, Corinne created a really strong foundation for her show mapped out great content, planned fabulous guests, and really got to know her listeners. That one is particularly key. Third, she promoted the hell out of her show during the pre-launch phase. She created a wonderful trailer and beautiful cover art. Fourth, Corinne already had a pretty good following before she launched her show and she was active in several groups where she was able to promote her show. And finally, she has been really consistent about creating excellent content and continuing to promote weekly. Corinne writes strong titles and show notes, and she creates some of the best social media assets I've ever seen. Go check her out on Instagram and look at her reels and uh, her videograms and audiograms. Truly amazing. Go listen to her podcast. Even if you don't have a doodle dog, <laughs> just go listen at least a little bit to just to see how wonderful her show is and how awesome she is. As a result of the success of Corinne's podcast, she launched a free boot camp this spring that led to a paid course, which did fabulously well, as in her students loved the course and she made significant money. Now, if you follow Corinne's roadmap, are you guaranteed to get the same success? There are never guarantees, but hers is a great roadmap to follow. Now, I'm sharing that part about her boot camp and course because money is a big reason, the main reason really, for caring about your podcast rank. The higher your rank, the more listeners you have. The more listeners you have, the more money you can make from your podcast, whether that be from selling your own services and courses or from getting sponsors and selling ads. When most people think about making money from their podcast, they immediately think about sponsors and ads. I would challenge you instead to focus on selling your own programs and services. You maintain total creative control. You're never giving away ad space to other companies, and you're giving your listeners exactly what you know they want and need. So check out episode 81 on how do I promote my services and my podcast for details on how to do that. Link in the show notes. Now, if you do want to go the route of sponsors or ads, having a high podcast rank really helps. You don't have to be in the top 10 or even the top 20. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Chartable all have a top 200 chart. Given how many podcasts are out there, about 400,000 active shows out of over 4 million shows in existence, being in the top 200 is freaking awesome. So let's back up just a sec and talk about how podcast rank is calculated. 
Apple Podcasts says that their algorithm takes into account how many people listen to your show, so how many listeners you have, how many listeners follow your show, so how many followers you have, and those are two different numbers, how many people listen versus how many listeners follow. And the third thing that goes into their algorithm is what the completion rate of your episodes is. So that is what percentage of your episodes are listeners actually finishing. If listeners drop off midway through an episode or through a bunch of episodes, Apple Podcasts takes that as a sign that you may not produce, you may not be producing high quality content. Now, Apple Podcast says that ratings, reviews, and shares do not directly affect your rank. But these things do offer social proof of the quality and popularity of your show. So continue to encourage listeners to rate and review. And definitely ask listeners to follow your show since followers do contribute to your rank. Spotify says that their algorithm is based on the number of unique listeners and overall follower count. For Chartable, their algorith algorithm is based on listener counts. So to get data from Chartable, if you want to be in the Chartable charts, you have to add their tracking code to your podcast hosting provider. So go to Chartable, link in the show notes, sign up and get instructions on doing that. Now, you can also get another ranking from Listen Notes, link in the show notes. Listen Notes gives you a global ranking as a percentage. So top 50%, top 10%, top 1%, top 0.5%, for example. They say that their, their algorithm is based on popularity. Kind of enigmatic. <laughs> so... It's fun to know where your podcast ranks on these charts, but what does it matter? As we already discussed, your rank can help if you try to get sponsors or ads. Having a fairly high rank can show that your podcast is popular and has a good following. Most sponsors and advertisers will also ask for your specific download numbers and follower count as well, though. You can use your rank as social proof of your podcast popularity. Now, top 200 may not sound great in a vacuum, but compared to 400,000 active podcasts and over 4 million total podcasts, 200 is totally awesome. And Listen Notes Global Rank can be helpful once you're in the top 10%. Who cares what the exact number is when you have a top 10% podcast? Now let's talk about money again. Do you have to have a top ranking podcast to make money from your show? Well, what do you mean by top ranking? Top 10? Absolute number? Absolutely not. Top 20? Absolute number? N again, no, not at all. There is no specific rank that defines the point at which you can make money with your podcast, especially when you're selling your own programs and services. What matters more than rank is your community of listeners. How engaged are your listeners? Are they casual listeners? Those won't buy from you. Are they actual fans? They will buy from you. So here's what I recommend based on what Corinne has done at the, at the Doodle Pro podcast. Get to know your listeners really well. Ask questions and invite feedback. Give them your email address and invite them to DM you on social media. Then reply to them. Foster a real connected community of listeners so that you can nurture fans. Ideally, fans who will become super fans. Read Pat Flynn's book called Super Fans to learn more about how to do that. Give your listeners episodes that they're really looking for. You're creating a show for your listeners, not just for yourself. I shared a while ago in some past episode and probably more than once that 36% of people say they can't find episodes on topics they're looking for. That statistic still shocks me. 
figure out what your listeners are looking for and give it to them. Create content consistently. Get on a schedule and stick to it. Promote consistently. Create awesome audiograms and videograms. Those work much better than sharing just a static image. A couple of other side things here. Create new cover art if yours is shabby. Your cover art really needs to stand out and grab your listeners' attention. And consider renaming your podcast if the name isn't clear or unique enough. If it's at all confusing, if your listener can't tell what your show is about, come up with a new name. Ask your listeners to follow your show. Do this at the end of every episode. And finally, don't worry about your rank. Keep tabs on it, of course. Check in on it periodically, but don't stress about it. Focus on creating great content, nurturing a connected community of fans, and promoting consistently. Your podcast rank is not your goal. It's not your number one goal, at least. If you listened to episode 45, how to set the right goals for your podcast, then you know what your number one goal is for your podcast. Your number one goal is to help your listeners solve the problem that your podcast helps them solve. So my number one goal with this show is to help you use your podcast to become a thought leader in your field, reach a global audience, and get more clients. In other words, make money. When you have a listener-centric goal like that, you succeed at it every time you put out a new episode, every single time. Why? Because you are helping your listeners solve their problem. You're not making sure they're solving their problem because that's impossible to do with a podcast. You're not working with them one-on-one, -on -one, so you can't make sure that they're solving their problem. You're helping them. As long as you're giving them the information they need to solve their problem, then you're succeeding at your goal. <clears throat> this is a goal that you can control. When you have podcast rank as a goal, you can't control that goal. You can influence it, but you can't control it. So go back and listen to episode 45 for all the details on creating podcast goals. Link in the show notes. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to follow this show so you don't miss a single episode. And I will see you next time on Podcast Launchpad. Mm -hmm.